Hello, welcome. Scores on the doors. I was going to say part two, but this is part whatever. But I mean, it's the part I've recorded second today. I digress. Last Premier Spring Final. I was there. It was dope. Lisbon, banging crowd. Beautiful place as well. Weather was mwah, And the hotel had a jacuzzi. Usual, bottom to top, starting with pain. Pain gaming, I mean... Pfft. I mean, this is rough, right? You got to play phase, and then you got to play vitality. I'm gonna give them a, a C minus. They really weren't very competitive. Pain. Let's just open up the series uh, and take a look. Took a map off vitality, which was unexpected because Dust Two is vitality's best map. Although vitality got their own issues with consistency, communication, general issues. Big Uzera was a banger. I mean, just look at this, man. He is 1v-fucking-9ing a lot of these um, series. A lot of the time I watch Pain, you know, Big Uzera is trying to 1v-9. In this series, nobody was that good, but they just kind of got swept aside convincingly by FaZe. Um, again, Pain are like that, another team where, similar to when I talk about or when I talked about party astronauts in the pinnacle scores on the doors, you just need more from your individuals. I need to see more fragging before I can start to look at your play and analyze exactly how you can improve from a coaching aspect, right? There are definitely some issues, I think, with communication in chaotic mid rounds. I saw that a lot with pain where it looked like they lost the thread of what they were doing, that the plan wasn't there or didn't look like it was being followed. Definitely looked like information got lost in certain rounds. So if I was going to say something to Payne about how to um, improve, it would be looking at that communication and streamlining it in the mid to late rounds. But yeah, just need to see more fragging. C minus just because they were like pretty uh, not competitive. But... At least they did take a map off Vitality, and we were expecting them to be at the bottom of this group. Let's be fair to them. So, yeah, C minus. I'm going to stick with that. Next up is Big. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll look at the series again for this one. Tabson was a baller in this one. And, I mean, look at that, man. He's getting 100 ADR and, like, almost 1.4, like, almost 60 kills in a two-map series. And he's losing both of the games. Don't know, man, with big. Um, Crimbo was obviously, like, woeful in this series. But he's just come back from an illness. And then Na'Vi were good at this tournament. And they ran into Na'Vi after Na'Vi had had the loss to OG. And Na'Vi just got better and better as this tournament went on. And, you know, Simple was in simple mood. I mean, just look at this. Like, what the hell are you supposed to do when Simple does that? You know, and then Perfecto and Simple in this map. Like, it, it's... I don't know. Crimbo didn't have a good tournament. I think that is pretty clear. And Crimbo probably needs to be played better if Big are going to be competitive against the best teams. They need Sis and Tamsin and Crimbo. That needs to be their trio. And Crimbo probably needs to take as much of the fragging pressure off of Tabson's shoulders as possible. Just didn't happen this event. I'm gonna have to give them... They probably should have gone through this group versus an OG with a stand-in and two new players. I'm gonna have to give them a D, but I'll give them a D plus because I think there were reasons why they flopped this tournament. Not gonna talk too much more about big. D plus... We'll let them off this one because Crimbo had just come back from COVID. They rushed him back so that he could play. Keto had to stand behind them. Godby couldn't. Yeah, D+. Plus. I think they still should have been a bit more competitive. But again, they had to play Ensign Na'Vi, which is a pretty rough draw. Yeah, D+. Plus. Next up, we've got FaZe. And yeah, so they made it through their group. B-Pain. You don't get a lot of credit for that if you're FaZe. Lost to G2, and this was surprising. They absolutely squished G2 on Inferno. Just looked a class above, and I thought we were going to get the 
lost ancient <sighs> basically due to alexi b playing a life game honestly alexi b has really struggled individually as late for g2 but he was really good in this series uh, well in this map particularly so that was probably the big x factor there i still think ancient is a bit of an inconsistent map hard to pick because you start t side and as you can see like it's still ct sided i don't know ancient was swinging obviously the changes have, have made it different now the dust two was the really disappointing one they just seemed to fall apart it seemed like they mental boomed after ancient and i hate reducing series to hitting shots and fragging but it really felt like they phase mental boomed after ancient and like look at this individually obviously it helped the mona c and nico turbo smurfed this game mona c with an absolutely insane clutch and nico actually in the interview i did with him after this game said that um mona c's clutches on dust 2 were what allowed them to close that out so convincingly because otherwise phase would have had more chances to get in the game but I think a combination of getting clutched on a couple of times in that dust two in very unlikely circumstances and also just losing ancient, which I don't think they were at all expecting. Yeah, FaZe looked a bit mentally out of this game by the time sort of dust two was coming to a close. And then, yeah, they just got convincingly squished by Na'Vi. Na'Vi just absolutely butt blasted them. Um, not much more you can say. I think Na'Vi marched through this tournament and started to find the form that made them just unbeatable towards the end of last year. Everyone's roles were perfect. Simple, electronic, and bit were balling. So yeah, FaZe. Uh, this is the concerning result for FaZe. This one, the manner of it was concerning, but Na'Vi were really good at this tournament. So I'm not... D-mine, hmm, no, E... E plus. It's got to be an E plus. You've got to do better than this. You've got to be more competitive here. You should win this series. Both of these in combination are worrying and concerning, I think, for FaZe. It looked to me a lot to do with mental fortitude and the mental aspect of things. And I wonder if FaZe are maybe a little bit burnt out. They definitely talked about lacking practice days in the run up to um, what event? Uh, Dallas. And even here, their practice, I think, was limited. I don't know. I, I think maybe with more of a break before Cologne, they've obviously had to play Rubet, but it's online. It's very different. So I think FaZe will definitely look better at Cologne, but I am a little bit concerned. And I'm going to give them an E for this tournament. I, I think it was pretty poor, worse than Dallas. And the fact that G2 were able to beat them and how just completely not in this Na'Vi game they were, a little bit concerning for FaZe. Next up, we have Entz, who disappointed a little bit. Um, obviously, they beat big, all good. It's what you probably expect. Then they lost this series to OG. Now, OG were obviously the surprise package of the event. Dexter was balling. Fiku and Neofrag were settling in really well. OG, in general, were looking a lot better with this iteration of the team. I think they now have personnel that suit the loose style better. I don't think Valda or Nico particularly suited the loose style that OG played. I think Neofrag and Fiku looked a lot more independent, looked to take a lot more initiative, just looked more comfortable, basically, in the calling style uh, that Nexa employs. <laughs> Nexa himself admitted in an interview before the tournament that um, it's not the fanciest, but if you hit headshots, it's good. And that's basically what happened at this event. Obviously, Dexter, dude, this guy is so fucking good. Spirit must be absolutely gutted that they lost this guy, and he would pretty much make any team better honestly um mantu was probably watching at home biting his fucking nails because dexter was balling out of control man playing so well um so i don't know how much you want to criticize ents for falling to a very hot og but i think this was the concerning one losing overpass was probably okay if you're ents you probably look at this series if we go and take a look at it and you think well on new convert go ents should win that ents are good on those two maps this nuke ents through so many favorable scenarios so so many there were a lot of points where i think their 
individuals needed to be reined in a little bit more. Man, who has been such a revelation for Ensem and such a key part of why they've been so good at the start of this year, definitely was getting caught out in this new game. I mean, he's the one I remember, but also Spinks and Deha didn't have their best tournaments here. Again, you can maybe look to a little bit of burnout because they played Dallas. They played basically everything at the start of this year. They've also played more probably online CS than a lot of the top teams. They had to do qualifier after qualifier just to get to this Blast Spring final. So I wonder if Ents probably, again, similar to FaZe, maybe suffering a little bit of burnout. Um, but it's still disappointing. I'm going to give him a D. It wasn't completely woeful. I think they suffered from Dihar and Spinks having slow tournaments. Definitely slow to warm up in this tournament for sure. I suspect they'll be better at Cologne. But for this tournament, it was disappointing. So they're going to get a D. Now we're on to the top four and we're on to some surprising. OG, fuck it. Do I give them an S? I almost want to give them... I'm going to give them an S-, minus. fuck it. They beat the second best and the third best teams in the world, or ranked teams. You can argue about how good teams are, but Na'Vi, Ents, and FaZe, I think, are the three best teams in the world. They beat two of them. And then they took a map off of Na'Vi and were probably the most competitive games Na'Vi had this whole... They were the only games Na'Vi had this whole tournament that looked competitive at any point. Taking Na'Vi down on Inferno... Super fucking impressive. Yeah, just an S- minus from OG. It definitely was built on individuals, um, but the meta is a bit more individualistic at the moment, so it's not necessarily a problem. They looked so much more comfortable, like I've already mentioned, under Nexus Calling. You know, Flames looked better. You know, Neofrag looked great. Fiku looked great. You know, fuck the ratings in this series. You know, they got spanked basically on two maps and Na'Vi were playing out their damn minds. Such an amazing tournament from OG. Really nice guys as well. Spoke to Flames a bit. Got a great interview uh, out of him. You know, spoke to Degster, who's obviously not part of OG, but was with them for this event, who gave me another great interview. Just really friendly, chill dudes. Um, Neofrag even gave an amazing interview. Was worried about his English, but it was perfectly fine. Um, yeah, impressed with OG. Could be Honeymoon. Don't want to get too excited about him just yet, but... I'm definitely way more excited about this OG lineup than I was the previous. This OG lineup looks like they can make Nexus very loose calling style work. S minus. Fucking top draw stuff, boys. Awesome. And now we have to talk to about G2. G2, and uh, this is something that Striker says. They simultaneously surprise you in the best and worst way in the same tournament. Surprised in the best way with this phase series, and I've already talked a bit about it. Mona C and Nico going fucking bananas. Beat Vitality. I would say G2 and Vitality are at a similar level going into this tournament. Both good-ish with decent peaks. I would say G2 probably have a higher peak, personally, than Vitality, um, but with obvious problems and have been underwhelming. Getting to top four at this event was was a good performance for G2. I think this was the disappointment, though. They, they're really good on Inferno G2. That's the one thing you can say about them, Inferno. They're very, very legit on, and their T side on Inferno was... Mwah. They were abusing Masuta on the B-bomb site perfectly, and then abusing the positioning of the players on A in relation to the B-bomb site with those a wraps, uh, with the B-raps, sorry, through Arch. Beautiful T side there. And then they put eight rounds up on this nuke T side and you think it's in the bag and they just did that G2 thing of they pick a half and they crumble. And they did it again here. I don't know if I can point to mental fortitude, what it is. I heard behind the scenes that actually G2 were getting on very well at this event and that the um, personal dynamics are, are improving as of late. So I don't know what to make of that, but... It was definitely a better G2. They're going to get a B from me because this was a better G2 than we've seen. And beating FaZe before FaZe kind of totally mental boomed. Like, you know, the Ancient Wind was legit and then they did the business on Dust2. They have to get some credit, G2. They are looking better. I still think... I still wonder about this five-man lineup just because of the personalities behind the scenes and exactly how that's all going with Alexi B as a leadership figure. But like I say, I heard from sources 
that it was better this tournament than it maybe has been. So maybe going for G2 can be more promising. I would expect them to, again, look decent at Cologne, probably better than they have um, since Katowice. So obviously Katowice was a huge peak. But this tournament was decent. This loss was disappointing, but Vitality had a good event themselves. Apex had some maps that we haven't seen from him in fucking years. And Zewu was back to something near his peak. So, yeah, G2 get a B. Decent, solid performance. Next up, Vitality, the Bs. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Lost to G2. G2 were the better team in this series. Beat Pain, but dropped a map. It's not looking very convincing at this point. Then they 2 0 Ents, which is impressive. However, an Ents that may be slightly underperformed at this event. Then they beat G2, who are having a good event, and do so in pretty impressive fashion. Vitality in this Ents game as well were impressive, particularly in the Nuke overtime. The chaotic situations where vitality i think have suffered due to their communication they looked so much better in this nuke game and dupree mentioned it again in the interview i did with him he said that he felt like that was really important for them on nuke the vitality's t sides look good looked really good i think at this event in general ct sides suffer i think from a lack of individual performances dupree again referenced that but when it came to this final there was just no way, man. Na'Vi were too good. Um, look, a bit simple and electronic, all putting in, like, performances that will win, single-handedly win games. All three of them were doing it. Even SDY was having, like, mad multi-kill rounds on B, on Overpass. So, yeah, I think Vitality get a B as well. It was a great performance. B+, plus because they made it all the way to the Grand Final. I would have given them an A for a Grand Final run if it had been a bit more of a convincing run. I think the group stage, they had the benefit of playing Pain, whereas I think if they'd have played one of these teams, they would have had a much harder elimination game. 2 0 Vitality, 2 0 Ents, you can't take too much away from them. However, I do think Ents were having a slightly subpar event by their standards. But then they beat G2, and a G2 actually having a good event by their standards. So, you know, full credit to Vitality and. Coming back on the T side of Nuke is very impressive, but the T sides are good compared to their CT sides particularly. So I think Vitality have to get a B plus. They have to get a better grade than G2 because they had a similar tournament to G2, almost reversed. G2 were more convincing early, but kind of waned a smidge in this series, whereas Vitality, I think, were a bit shaky early and grew into things. B plus for Vitality. I'll be brutally honest. I still am not sold on this five-man Vitality lineup. I think Masuta is pretty awful, being brutally honest. Obviously not awful by a general standard. He's still one of the best Counter-Strike players in the world in the grand scheme of things, but at a top-tier level, he's just not good enough. And it's I'm not sure they're ever going to get over the cultural and the communication issues. I still don't think this Vitality will ever win anything, but maybe they can be more competitive in the top 10 than I thought. Because I thought they would struggle to even be a competitive top 10 team, kind of like they have so far. Maybe they can grow into a team that can try and break into the top five, try and threaten some deep top four, maybe final runs in events. It remains to be seen. I think they're so hard to predict just because there's so many variables at play here. But Zewu getting closer to his best is definitely important. I'd like to see somebody other than Apex, maybe Dupree or Majusk, stepping up and matching at Zewu's level at least for like a half or a game here or there. A map, maybe, per se, per chance. But B+, plus, good run. Now, Na'Vi. How do we categorize Na'Vi's run? They come in with a stand-in, just kick their in-game leader, start things off with a loss to OG. Whoops. Whoopsie fucking daisy. Mildly concerning. Then they bat a big. Then they bat a phase. Then they bat a OG on two maps. Do drop a map, but OG were very fucking hot this tournament. Then they bat a Vitality. I think it's got to be an S. Just because they battered number one ranked team in the world. They battered a couple of other top 10 teams. They battered 
a team that was on a very, very hot streak this tournament. And I think OG would have beaten anybody else in this semi. I think they would have beaten G2 or Vitality in this semi. They were so fucking hot this tournament. It's an A plus or an S minus performance. Simple. Back to his best. Bit in electronic. Doing work. Electronic doing work from the in-game leadership role. SDY was a bit shaky on certain maps and positions, but overall actually slotted in pretty nicely. I, he's basically filled in all of the roles that were left by Boomich or left by Electronic because Electronic has moved to play more centrally on most of the maps. So either it was the position Boomich vacated or it was the position that Electronic vacated by moving that SDY was filling. He struggled in certain positions. For example, Pit on Inferno. Electronic is one of the best Pit anchors we've ever had in this game. And SDY struggled, I think, holding Pit on Inferno. But then some bomb sites, he was very good. B-site of Overpass, he looked very good. And really, SDY is supposed to be bottom of the scoreboard every game. So it's almost like you just need to be a solid role player. You just need to be willing to learn, which Simple says he is and humble which simple and blade said he was i think this navi could be scary could be really scary if they can maintain the motivation and i know we have obviously russia's invasion of ukraine hanging over some of these players and that is most definitely going to affect your motivation for a video game let's be perfectly frank it puts into perspective how important a video game really is in the grand scheme of things when there's a war tearing apart your country. But if Na'Vi can keep the motivation, can keep growing with Electronic as in-game leader, and Electronic looked good in, in leading, by the way. It was a simple, might not be the correct way to describe the style of calling, but it was very much based on mid-rounding. It was very much based on we have a default in mind, we'll play that default out for the first 30 seconds of the round, and then we'll make mid-round calls based on what electronic sees and hears the info he gets. But it kind of suits Na'Vi because they have electronic, they have simple, they have bit, even Perfecto, who can make plays on the T side to create rotations, to create gaps, to give them opportunities. And if electronic can be as good at calling around those opportunities as he was at this event, this Na'Vi could be scary and could, in some senses, be harder to counter because they seem to move away from a bit more of a system. Is a system-based approach the way I want to say it? They moved away a little bit from a structured out-of-spawn approach to more of a default and then play off that, which might even suit these players better. Na'Vi, they're going to get an S- minus from me. I think this was a fantastic tournament run. Really well fucking played, Na'Vi. And yeah, they've got to be terrifying some teams coming into Cologne because Na'Vi in this form, basically after this OG game, this, 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 this Na'Vi, I don't know, man, who's going to stop them? If FaZe are not up to par and Ents are, are looking a little bit wobbly, these are the two teams that can stop Na'Vi. Uh, can they stop them at their peak? I don't know, man. That's all from me, guys, for Blast. Scores on the Doors Premi Springy Final. You know the drill. You've got to like the video. You've got to drop me a comment. Tell me if I'm a dumbass or if I'm a genius. And if you didn't like it, you're probably a pain fan. In which case, yeah, pain. That's all I got. Pain.